So, like I said, welcome everyone. This is the second episode in the series of podcasts that I've decided to do. If you haven't checked the first episode, which is the summary of the crafting project, by all means, please watch it. You should find some interesting stuff in it. Regardless, this is the second video and today I'll be explaining to the best of my ability some of the stats in Cabal. Most of them are already known. Some of them are creating confusion, so I'll try to explain as much as I know. There's obviously more to this. I don't think I have all the information, but uh, you know, you gotta do some of your own work. You can't do all of it. And I don't know all of it anyway, because only developers know all of it. But as much as I've uh, discovered and as much as I've been told, as much as I know, I've put in this video. So, without further ado, let's present, since this is the easiest way. And the reason why I'm starting with the stats is because this, I, in my opinion, is the most important part of Cabal. Cabal is a very heavy numbers game. Everybody can agree to that. It requires a bit of skill, but not so much in terms of um, dexterity. So it's not so much skill-based as much as having sufficient skill to understand when you're strong enough, when you're weak, understand your strong moments, your weak moments, when you're fighting certain enemies, whether they're players or mobs, you need to understand the numbers, if they are in your favor or not, which means, do I have sufficient stats to challenge this situation or do I back off? And part of that just has to do with number processing, which means that in the back of your mind, in the back of your head, you will have to assess a situation to know if you can successfully, if you can come out on top in that situation. And for that, you need to know what the stats do so that you understand at any given point, am I weak, am I strong? Have I been weakened by debuffs? Um, do I have sufficient damage? Is my enemy gonna kill me? Am I gonna kill him? And so on. And hopefully... I mean, Cabal is already pretty simple. It shows you numbers, which, you know, if you hit somebody for a thousand damage and they hit you back for ten thousand, it doesn't take much analysis. But it at least helps you understand certain things. So, like I said, this is going to be very number heavy, mostly because that's what Cabal is, it's just a series of numbers. And I'll try to talk you through how to maximize those numbers so that you win most of the time, or at least you can save your ass. So before I begin, I'd like to go back to the old damage formula. If you guys remember the old damage calculator that last hour made in uh, Excel, or if you remember the damage calculator, the gear configurator actually, um, that I created based on his Excel spreadsheet, um, there are a couple of things that have been the same since forever in Cabal. And then there are some new things which I'm going to try and explain to the best of my ability. The old damage formula, which I've taken out as a reference from the old documents that I had, to the left, is actually pretty simple. Back in the day, PvE damage, for instance, for Death Tempest in this case, for a blader skill, um, PvE damage was computed in a pretty straightforward manner. You had your attack value, which 
multiplied with uh, the skill amp. So the, the amount of amp that your skill had plus the amount of uh, amp that the player had and then um, you added skill damage skills had uh, specific damage so the first attack multiplied by skill amp plus player amp is what you see in the first um, part of the formula with the attack multiplied by amp plus 1.7 plus there was a specific um, skill lamp associated to Death Tempest at the time. Um, so all of this multiplied, plus Death Tempest, which had a PvE bonus, plus 950 additional damage, Minus the level penalty, because there was a level penalty involved and it still exists, which makes um, levels very important in Cabal. So you need to have maximum level in order to deal maximum damage. That's still true to this day. Um, so minus level penalty, minus the defense of the monster, which was a flat amount. It was just a, ran a number. And then... At the end of all of this, you added any additional damage that you might have had. So, um, it's pretty simple. I've simplified it to attack multiplied by player amp plus skill amp, so the total amount of amp plus any skill additional damage, minus level, minus defense, plus player additional damage. This was for non-crits. And below you can see the same for crits, where you multiply all of this, so all the above PvE damage that I've just mentioned, you multiplied it. Um, so first you took out the additional damage, because additional damage does not get multiplied. Uh, it's added after all formulas so you take it out of the pve damage non-crit which is why you see e2 minus additional damage which means the pve damage value minus additional damage which is player plus skill um, and then you multiply it with the amount of critical damage that you have plus uh, you also looked for in this table at least i was looking at uh, more sources of minus critical damage resist which might increase your critical damage or function like critical damage so multipliers and then at the end you have to put back additional damage from player and skill so technically if you had 12,503 pv damage with a specific amount of critical damage which in this case i added as 300 percent um you will then have 52,000 whatever PV critical damage. So that was the old way. You had attack multiplied by skill plus player amp um, minus defense minus the penalty for your level plus additional damage. So that was the old way. The new way is still a mystery but luckily there are a couple of things that uh, players have discovered which kind of clarifies the way that the damage formula works but it doesn't um, allow us to come up with a formula because it's a bit more complicated than that but at least we have observations which can help us determine various effects of these uh, stats and I've taken out five notably important changes. So first and foremost, the current damage reduction that we see today in stats is actually the old defense, which means that 350 damage reduction today will reduce damage by 350. 
pretty much counters everything that additional damage does. So when you have uh, ignore damage reduction 50, that kind of equals 50 additional damage. Because it's that flat amount that was usually uh, subtracted from the old formula, you can see, um, oops, you can see skill plus skill additional damage plus player additional damage minus defense. So they were additive. And so in the same way, uh, additional damage is now countered by damage reduction, which functions like the old defense. It's plus minus plus um, additional damage minus damage reduction instead of defense. The new evasion has been described as uh, being 1% miss for every 100 evasion, which means that for a blader with uh, 3200 evasion, you're looking at 32% miss chances. After all the calculations of uh, accuracy, ignore evasion, and evasion and ignore accuracy, and cancel ignore evasion have been um, have been done. And I'm saying that because you'll see throughout the presentation that there's always a property and a counterpart to that property. So in this case, you have accuracy, which gets countered by ignore accuracy and ignore evasion, which is an offensive stat because it ignores the evasion. It's being, it's being countered by evasion as well as cancel ignore evasion. And you'll see why there was this need to have both evasion and cancel ignore evasion because otherwise you'd say but cancel ignore evasion is negative negative so why would you why would you need it since it does the same thing but you'll see that it does something slightly different uh, it's like double negation in French I guess anyway moving forward third notably notable difference to the old uh, damage formula is the current defense like i said damage reduction um, now functions like the old defense and so the new defense is actually a new property which is expressed as efficiency and efficiency is of course calculated in percentages um, the new defense counters penetration Fourth observation regarding penetration, which is one of the new stats, it doesn't boost your damage past a certain point. And penetration, just like defense, has been expressed as efficiency, which means it's not a value, it's a percentage. Percentages goes, go from 0 to 100. How much value does that 100 mean, 100% 100 mean? That depends on the amount of penetration, the amount of defense, and I'll try to explain it. Um, the bottom line is, if you have infinite penetration, let's assume you have infinite penetration, what that does is just, it removes any kind of penalty which might have been imposed on your character by an abnormal amount of monster defense, such as a boss, let's say. Um, so when you have infinite penetration, it just makes it feel like the monster has no defense capability whatsoever. Which means that the monster's uh, defense is 0%. That's what an insane amount of penetration does. Obviously, that's never the case because you don't have infinite penetration and because monsters have insane defense. And so penetration, to a certain extent, almost always does something. There are some cases when it doesn't do anything, and I'll explain those as well uh, based on player feedback. But for the most part, just remember that uh, penetration and defense are actually percentages. And so the final observation that I felt the need to highlight is the fact that magic always deals 100% damage because... I heard a lot of uh, misconceptions regarding minimum damage. Uh, 
critical hits and magic skills always deal 100% damage. Minimum damage is just something that was applied to sword skills back in the day and each class has its, had its own um, value for minimum damage, for default minimum damage. Bladers, for instance, I remember had 90% or something close. Warriors had something very low, like 80 or 75% or something, and Force Bladers were somewhere in between. Um, this is one of the reasons why back in the day you saw people using um, bracelets of fighter on bladers so that they take the minimum damage to 98 or 99 percent because back then um, we didn't have these critical damage builds some bladers were still using amp and uh, mithril amped weapons um, we didn't crit that much we had 50, 55 crit rate, maybe 60, I don't know, depending on the build. And so um, they were using this minimum damage boost from Bracelets of Fighter, uh, obviously for the amp, for the attack, but also for the minimum damage. Wizards and uh, magic classes never had this problem because we always had 100% uh, minimum damage on magic spells. And critical hits also had... Uh, full damage. So this was just a problem for non-crits, which is the yellow number. Um, as far as I've seen, maybe I'm missing something, but as far as I've seen, attack and magic have no direct counter other than uh, the wizard buff, for instance weaken, which reduces, uh, reduces the enemy damage. And uh, This is it's like a small amount, it's 74 attack if I remember properly. So just 74 attack, less. Everything else that I've seen um, is kind of a percentage to your attack, so it doesn't reduce your attack by a fixed amount. You only have the player debuff weaken and uh, also bosses. Bosses will reduce your attack by 500, 600, whatever. It's like the Lycan boss, for instance, reduces your attack, which does pretty much the same thing as weaken. Um, everything else that is reducing your attack uh, will most likely reduce it by a certain percentage. And so... Um, when you look at how you deal damage, because of the fact that there's no direct counter to attack and magic, and critical damage and amp relying on this amount of attack or magic, this is what makes it invaluable to your actual final damage output. Because every other property that you have, offensive property, uses this this attack value so your attack will boost your amp it will boost um, your critical hits the intensity of your attacks of all your attacks and because there's no direct counter to it other than like um, removing 500 of your attack it's invaluable and that's why um, battle mode 3 for instance is very important because it gives a shit ton of attack weapons everything that gives attack is important because of it and you'll see as i go along that some of the values uh, in the presentation will be marked as a percentage others will be flat values when we talk about percentages you need to remember that they're a percentage of attack because people look at the uh, stats list and they see the percentage but they don't really understand the percentage of what so that's almost always multiplying your attack so if you look at the stats I've marked with orange some of the newer ones with red some of the old ones which were uh, already familiar so attack and magic like I said is the base value that influences your damage attack rate will determine the success chance 
of your attack. This is what determines whether you block, uh, whether your attack is blocked or not. Critical rate is critical rate, the chance that an attack will be a critical hit. The critical damage is a multiplier of damage for successful critical hits. But what's important is that the number you see in your um, in your uh, detailed stats is actually added. So if you see 200 critical damage, it's actually plus 200, which means if you have 200 critical damage, you do triple damage because it also contains your default 100% plus 200, which is your multiplier. So it's not two times damage, it's three times damage because it does not include your default 100%. Uh, sword Amp, Magic Amp, uh, these are the multipliers that uh, we used back in the day as well. Um, accuracy is kind of like a, an upgraded version of attack rate. It, it explains why your attacks um, miss sometimes. So your attacks can be blocked, your attacks can miss. When they miss, it comes from accuracy. When your attacks get blocked, it comes from attack rate. So if you see block, 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 you need more attack rate. If you see miss, 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 you need more accuracy. That's pretty much the short version of it. Uh, penetration, again, one of the new stats. Like I said, it increases the effectiveness of your uh, damage output up to 100%. And the reason why I say up to 100% is because at some point you'll have sufficient penetration to cancel out the defense of the enemy which means that adding more penetration does nothing. It's the same as going to Fort Ruina, where mobs have 1,437 HP, and critting for 100,000. It does nothing, like dead is dead. As long as you deal 1,437 damage, any additional damage is pointless. It's just overkill. In the same way, if you have way too much penetration for a, a low level monster most of that penetration won't give you more damage because you're already doing maximum damage additional damage is the additional damage that gets added to each hit at the end of all calculations and such uh, minimum damage i've aligned it to the left because left is uh, for sword if you've noticed, it's attack to the left, sword damp to the left, minimum damage, I aligned it to the left so that it's clear that it does not influence magic. Uh, like I said, it's a bonus to your uh, non-critical hit, to your yellow damage um, for sword skills. Final damage increased is a multiplier for your final damage, of course, for your total damage. And normal damage increase is a multiplier for your um, yellow damage, for your non-critical damage. Minimum damage would take you to 100%. Normal increases it further. It can go above. Um, also, attack abilities come from ignores. You have the base raw values for everything, and then you also have ignores for almost everything. Um, you have ignore evasion, assuming that there is any. You have ignore damage reduction, which translates into additional damage, but only if there is damage reduction to speak of, which almost always exists. Ignore resist critical rate, which is you could say that it's the same as critical rate, but I'll explain later on why it's slightly different, but it ignores any resist that the monster might have. Um, ignore resist critical damage, same, it ignores critical damage. Same for resist amp. Um, 
and then you have the new stats or the newer stats which include ignoring the resist to down to stun and to knockback which means that you down stun and knock back people more often as well as um, cancel ignore penetration which cancels out some of the defensive stats uh, represented by ignore penetration assuming that there is any defensive abilities so this is like the middle tree when you open detailed stats this was the left column and now defensive defensive abilities are in the middle uh, you have defense the new defense which is uh, an efficiency factor so this one increases effectiveness of your defense until you take one damage so you take 1000 damage 800 damage 600 damage 400 damage and then one 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 when you get one damage from mobs um, you know that your defense is sufficient like you cancelled out any kind of uh, offensive capability uh, that the enemy has and you take minimum damage that's what it means so a very high amount of defense just means you get minimal damage which is one um, defense rate uh, is what helps you survive in large groups of monsters it's a it's typically effective against uh, trash mobs and such because bosses will have a high amount of attack rate anyway so it's mostly for the trash mobs um, you know your defense rate succeeded when you see a block on yourself so when monsters fail to land a hit just like you are trying to hit them with attack rate and your attacks get blocked monsters will try to hit you if you have sufficient uh, defense rate you'll block their attacks same for evasion but this time with miss uh, they'll try to hit you they'll fail you'll see miss above your head damage reduction is the old defense uh, is just a base value that cancels out additional damage so it's like at the end of uh, all calculations you just reduce it by a flat amount uh, it's not a percentage like the defense it's flat so attack and defense are percentages damage reduction and additional damage are flat values like in the old days you also have ignore penetration as a defense ability because it uh, works kind of like defense it increases the effectiveness of your defense by ignoring any kind of penetration that the enemy has uh, obviously if you ignore all of it you're good to go ignore accuracy um, functions pretty much like evasion but it doesn't increase your evasion it just removes some accuracy from the enemy so that you get missed more often um, they contribute to evasion you have cancel ignore damage reduction um, which is when the opponent ignores your damage reduction this one cancels the ignore damage reduction of the enemy so technically it's a double negative it works like damage reduction but instead of I'll explain in a bit why it's different same for cancel ignore evasion you have your regular evasion if the enemy has ignore evasion and you counter it with cancel ignore evasion and then you have final damage multiplier um, final damage decreased which is a multiplier of your total uh, received damage and then you also have the second part of the defense tree which is resists and you can have resists for critical rate for critical damage stun down knockback um, unmove as well and you also have uh, for the new effects of uh, suppression and silence as well as the old uh, resist amp so all these will factor into your uh, defense ability um, and the third column in your stats is the one that handles uh, miscellaneous I would say with life leech which is HP absorb uh, 
and uh, this represents the amount of damage that you could potentially steal. So this is your limit, this is your cap, the percentage. Um, health limit up is your actual amount of life steal, and it will always be less than the absorb as a value. Of course you have uh, auto heal for life. MP absorb functions numerically like uh, life leech, but there's a difference between life and uh, mana because you will only leech mana from the target enemy, whereas life will be leeched from all enemies. Which means, to give you an example, if you target an enemy that takes one damage, you will absorb life from all of the surrounding mobs, except for him, because you don't do any damage to it, and you will absorb almost no mana Actually, you will absorb no mana because you targeted the monster which is immune or you miss, let's say, like in GI, when you kill in the sixth wave, there's a Kevin. You always miss, miss, miss. You don't leech from that shit. So you have to take care of uh, your mana pool because if you select an enemy which you deal no damage to, then you won't absorb any mana back. This is like almost a non-issue, but it's worth mentioning that uh, life still happens on all the monsters that you hit, uh, whereas MP only gets absorbed from the one that you targeted. And same MP limit um, is the actual amount of uh, mana that you can steal. It's limited by the amount of percentage that you have. And just like life, there's also an amount of uh, MP that gets automatically regenerated. And of course you have the move speed, which is your character's move speed. Um, you also have battle mode time increase, which increases uh, by up to 10 seconds the amount of time that you spend in battle mode 2 and 3 and so on. So instead of 90 seconds, you end up with 100 seconds. And boost HP increases um, the restoration granted by uh, life potions by a certain amount at 30% uh, boost you will regenerate out of a 700 potion so out of a out of a hundred out of a thousand life potion because it's easier to calculate you'll regenerate 1300 with enough HP boost. And like I said, HP steal from all targets in range, MP steal from the selected target only. Um, and people usually ask me how much life steal should I have? Well, that depends on your damage and it depends on how much you want to steal. The formula is easy, it's just your amount of absorb multiplied by the damage should equal the amount of steal that you have. Which means, if you're planning on stealing 120 or 130 per hit, so your HP steal is 120 or 130, and assuming you have 4,000 4, damage um, on a crit, because you usually count, um, well, in this Age of Cabal you count your crits instead of non-crits, but back in the day we used to uh, we used to look at non-crits because those were more often, so you needed sustain in non-crits situations. Um, but these days it's just about the crits. So assuming that you do 4000 damage per crit with a claw attack as a blader for instance, then it's easy to calculate because you have an X amount of absorb multiplied by 4000 which is your crit should equal 130, which is what you aim for. So then the amount of percentage, absorb percentage, that you need to have is 130 
uh, divided by 40. And so it's 3.25%, roughly 4% lifesteal. And with 4% lifesteal at 4,000 damage, you will obviously be able to leech 160 per hit, which is a bit higher than the 130 that you were looking for. The point is, if you have 1% life leech, you'll steal 40. If you have 2, you will leech 80. If you have 3, you will leech 120. So, why this is important is because if you have, if you need to life leech 160 or 170, it means that the higher your damage, the lower the amount of life leech you need to have as absorb. Um, if you're fighting a boss where your damage is naturally lower, if you wish to steal the same amount, then you're gonna need a lot more life steal because your damage will be lower. So in order to sustain the same amount of life per hit, you need to increase your percentage because your damage decreases. When your damage increases, you can lower your percentage. Um, also, this is important so that you don't get out of sync because if you have too much life still when you deal a lot of damage, most of that will be wasted because if you have 10% life steal in a 4000 damage situation, that will allow you to steal um, 400 life, but you'll have 160, 200 at max. So then half of that is going to be wasted. So it makes no sense to use 10% when 4 would be enough for 160. So you have to, um, long story short, you have to find a value of uh, life steal limit up which is comfortable for you um, anywhere in the range of uh, 160 to 200 would be fine for most classes i would say um, so aim for 160 200 something like that look at the damage on the monsters that you're trying to for instance in chaos arena or uh, gi or if you're fighting some bosses in a specific dungeon look at the amount of damage that you do and then you can figure out how much absorb you need for the most part i can tell you that it's a good idea to aim for 160 plus life life leech so 160 limit uh, maintain three percent life steal from the rune and then just worry about increasing your damage because if you do 50,000 damage um, at that point, even 1% is enough. Because we're talking about a shit ton of uh, lifesteal, like 500, with just 1%. But at lower levels, and this is probably more important at lower levels, aim for 160 plus life limit. And then, based on your, your damage, you add more or less uh, lifesteal. I think for the most part, 4% on a Force Absorb Ring as you level up will be more than enough until you get the rune. When you get the rune, at that point you'll probably have sufficient damage, but it's just something that deserves mentioning. And it's the same for mana, um, with the difference that um, with life you would regenerate 160 for every monster hit, Whereas with mana, you regenerate 160 from your main uh, target. And if the target is like a dummy where you do one damage, you don't, life, you don't uh, leech mana. That's why you should use short skills on dummies because if you do minimal damage, MP leech doesn't work. So either you use a high amount of MP heal, which regenerates your mana per second, or you use very short skills so that you don't have to rely on MP leech to keep casting spells and so that you don't burn a lot of MP potions. So um, going back to counters, right? You have attack and magic. Uh, 
and these don't have any direct counter it's just debuffs that you get from players or from uh, mobs maybe in the future we'll have uh, more direct counters but as of today it's only the type of debuff that you get from the lycan and the type of debuff that you get from a wizard like weaken which lowers your attack uh, so it doesn't have any direct counter it's just a value that gets calculated and you can't do much about it attack rate versus defense rate like i said the result is either a successful hit if you have sufficient attack rate it's a block if your attack rating is too low um, the simplest way to calculate this is to divide attack rate by defense rate it's it seems to be the most the, like the simplest uh, form of um, computing so to say which is to say if you have 10,000 attack rate and the enemy has 8,000 defense rate dividing 10,000 by 8,000 is 10 divided by 8 of course it's 80 percent so you could expect like 20 percent of your hits to be blocked um you always uh, it's i'm stupid it's the other way around if you have 8,000 attack rate and 10,000 defense rate. So when your attack rate is less than defense rate, if you divide 8,000 by 10,000, it's 80%. If you have 10,000 attack rate and the enemy has 8,000 defense rate, um, it's more than 100%. So you always, you never get blocks. Which is, if you have uh, more attack rate than defense rate, you always hit. If you have less than defense rate, um, you'll start seeing more and more blocks, and you can easily fix this if you go try if you try to kill a boss and you see a lot of block 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 on your hits, you go aura which is plus three thousand attack rate, no more blocks. So either you do that or you increase your attack rate in weapons. It's same result. Uh, or you get an upgrade for attack rate. The point is, when your attack rate exceeds the defense rate of the enemy, you will no longer see blocks. For crit rate and uh, ignore resist crit rate, which counter the resist crit rate, um, crit rate as a, um, as a bonus is a buff that gets applied to your player. It's always applied right ignore resist crit rate is not something that you apply it's it's something that gets subtracted from the enemy because you don't have the resist crit rate the enemy has a resist crit rate so while crit rate increases your stats ignore resist crit rate will lower the stats of the enemy by a certain amount so it kind of works like a soft debuff uh, of course, you cannot ignore something that doesn't exist. So, if your enemy doesn't have any um, resist, then your entire crit rate will be calculated. Now, there was a debate whether ignore takes numbers into the negative. So, if you have, uh, let's say, which kind of... What example can I give here? If you have 50 crit rate and the enemy has 50 resist crit rate, so technically you would have zero crit rate. That's impossible. And then you have ignore resist crit rate, uh, 10%. You would have um, 10 ignore resist crit rate countering 50 resist crit rate so the resist crit rate becomes 40 since you ignored 10 of it and then it's your 50 crit rate versus 40 resist crit rate which would make your crit rate be 10 percent right so technically you could say crit rate 50 plus 10 ignore resist that's 60 versus 
the 50 resist crit rate but it only works because the amount of resist crit rate is higher than the ignore if on the other hand you have uh, 50 crit rate 20 resist or 10 resist and you have 15 ignore resist you won't have 55 crit rate because you would normally say okay so i have 50 crit rate i have 15 ignore so that would make it uh, 65 but they only have um, 50 crit rate so then i should have 15 crit rate and that's not the case it's not the case because you cannot ignore more than 50 which is the resi oh, more than 10 which is the resist crit rate so if you have 15 ignore resist and 10 resist you will ignore 10 you won't ignore 15 and so it doesn't take values into the negative the enemy won't have minus 5 resist crit rate it's been proven for a couple of uh, other properties like resist critical damage and so on and I believe it's the same with um, crit rate luckily almost all monsters have resists it's very difficult to completely negate everything that they have in terms of resistance the same um, logic behind critical damage and amp you have critical damage which is which acts like a buff for you and then you have another offensive property which is the ignore of the enemy resist which acts like a debuff like a soft debuff for the enemy uh, as long as they have some sort of resist uh, and this is countered by uh, the resist and it's the same for accuracy uh, you just have a few more stats so you have accuracy which gets countered by evasion um, evasion then gets countered by ignore evasion ignore evasion gets countered by cancel ignore evasion and accuracy is uh, countered by ignore accuracy one to one so the end result of such a, a formula is whether you have a successful hit or a miss if your accuracy if your resulting accuracy is too low then you'll miss if not you'll land a hit so like i said accuracy is a straight counter to evasion ignore accuracy ignores some of that accuracy of course so it's like increasing your evasion but it increases your evasion by ignoring some of the offensive capability and then you have ignore evasion as an offensive capability which uh, helps in roughly the same way that accuracy does and then you have cancel ignore evasion so ignore accuracy reduces the effectiveness of evasion of uh, accuracy if your evasion is above zero your ignore evasion will also get applied and it will counter it in the same way that I've described critical rate, critical damage and damp. So it kind of functions like having more accuracy. And if ignore evasion is greater than zero, then cancel ignore evasion will lower that amount. But it won't um, tax your accuracy, which means it will take your ignore evasion to zero and that's it but it won't lower your accuracy so you start off from the end with cancel ignore evasion will neutralize any ignore evasion ignore accuracy will cancel any kind of accuracy and then evasion will get um, compared with any leftover accuracy like what's left of it so in this example um, let's say you have cancel ignore evasion in the same amount as ignore evasion so they cancel each other out 
and then you have ignore accuracy which let's say it's 50 percent of your accuracy so ignore accuracy will halve the amount of accuracy that you have let's use numbers as well so cancel ignore evasion 200 versus 200 ignore evasion they cancel each other out 300 ignore accuracy versus 2000 accuracy it will make it so that your actual accuracy is 1700 um, which gets divided by um, 1200 evasion let's say for uh, your usual wizard and then instead of having 2000 accuracy plus ignore evasion you actually have 1700 which gets divided by 1200 and that's 1.4 something so you have sufficient accuracy to always uh, land a hit if you, so this is versus a wizard which would have uh, 1200 1400 some lower amounts but if you have a resulting accuracy of 1700 and you're trying to hit a blader that has probably let's say 3200 evasion then that's only 53 percent which means that one out of two hits will be a miss because you have very little accuracy left to challenge that evasion so ignore evasion cancelled it itself out with cancel ignore evasion so they the result is zero for those and then ignore accuracy was able to cancel a lot of your accuracy so that you now end up with 53 percent chance of uh, of hitting the blader so that's one of the reasons why for instance um, playing a wizard on tg is a pain in the ass because not only do you have kind of low accuracy versus a force gunner let's say um, that has shit tons of accuracy so not only do you have um, lower than average accuracy but the enemy also has a lot of ignore and especially if you're fighting a force blader or a blader that builds into dexterity that has evasion then uh, it only gets worse if you're fighting another wizard maybe it's easier because you don't need that much accuracy but as soon as you have minimal accuracy and you're fighting something like a blader or a force blader then you run into issues because of all the ignores because of the leftover accuracy that you have uh, the same applies for penetration attack and cancel ignore penetration they get countered by ignore penetration and defense um, again we go back to what i was saying at the beginning of the presentation that the result of this challenge uh, penetration attack defense ignore penetration and cancel ignore penetration the result of this um, challenge of stats can either be full damage or minimal damage when you do minimal damage it's one 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 and you can often see that on shielders when you go to tg they have a lot of uh, ignore penetration they have a shit ton of defense you start hitting them you hit them for one 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 that's because you don't break through their uh, defense capability on the other hand um, you if you have sufficient damage and they don't have a lot of defense and ignore penetration you deal full damage and the reason why i say full damage is because um, there is a point in time when adding more penetration doesn't increase your damage and you can check that with potions it's easy like you go to a dungeon you use a 200 penetration potion if your damage doesn't change you have enough you run the same dungeon on level 5 where mobs have a lot of uh, um, defense and a lot of ignore penetration you pop that potion it increases your damage because suddenly you no longer have enough penetration um, there's also a bug on tg i think uh, one force blader friend told me that his damage actually decreases so force bladers have that elemental enchant which doubles their penetration and when he uses that instead of his damage being unchanged 
or increasing by a very small amount because he already has a shit ton of penetration. So doubling it um, doesn't boost the damage by that much. But instead of uh, either not changing the damage or increasing it just slightly, it actually lowers his damage. Maybe that's a bug, I don't know. It's just something to keep in mind. Either way, that's why I said in the beginning that penetration works like an efficiency factor because it allows you to do damage between one and maximum, whatever that maximum might be. Um, and that maximum is obviously determined by attack, critical damage, amp, and so on. So penetration just allows you to do full damage. It's like 100% efficiency. Nothing gets wasted. Um, the defense, the new version, reduces the amount of damage by countering penetration and it challenges it in terms of effectiveness. Um, ignore penetration also cancels some of the penetration that the enemy has, so it kind of functions like defense, but as long as the enemy has penetration, which is almost always the case, attack like I said, is a flat value, which gets multiplied further by amp and critical damage. And I also added uh, multiplied by penetration because um, it multiplies it until 100%. So it enables attack to be efficient. And uh, again, defense and penetration are percentages that can range between 1 and 100. And of course, uh, the resulting value of this entire challenge uh, will decide the final damage. So if you look at all of these, uh, you obviously have attack. I didn't uh, add it in the formula because it's it always exists, like it's there, you never miss it. So the challenge is between penetration and cancel ignore penetration, which are the offensive stats. Um, and defense and ignore penetration and if you do this um, formula backwards you have the defense being challenged by penetration penetration being challenged by ignore penetration and ignore penetration being challenged by cancel ignore penetration so if you go backwards you have cancel ignore penetration removing some ignore penetration the leftover ignore penetration reduces penetration and then penetration gets further challenged by uh, any amount of existing defense that's how you should read it and again um, cancel ignore penetration will only affect ignore penetration it won't cut down into the defense so it's not cancel defense, it's just cancel ignore penetration as long as ignore penetration exists. And ignore penetration will cancel penetration as long as penetration exists. Um, and of course the remaining uh, stats, additional damage, countered by damage reduction. These are just flat values, they are not percentages. There's just, if you have uh, 50 additional damage, it gets countered by 50 damage reduction. Which, if you think about it, a lot of people say get damage reduction, but that doesn't do much. It just reduces damage. So instead of getting 5,000 damage, if you have 1,000 damage reduction, you get 4,000. It doesn't change things that much. Um, it helps in certain situations, but for the most part, you need to rely on other uh, defensive capabilities because damage reduction is just... It's good for trash mobs that do less damage and then you get one 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 from trash mobs. That's fine. But if you think about a boss, the boss already hits for thousands of damage. It doesn't give a shit about your 1000 damage reduction. You need to worry about reducing the damage by a percentage, not by a flat value. Anyway, uh, final damage increase, final damage decrease. Um, except the additional damage and the damage reduction, it functions... Uh, as a multiplier for your resulting damage and then uh, normal attack damage that's for non-crits and uh, I have not seen any any kind of uh, counter to it yet it just increases your non-crit so 
if you put all of this together in something that tries to look like a damage formula but it's not that obvious you have attack which doesn't get countered by anything like i said it's just weaken and the boss um, you have crit rate which gets countered by resist crit rate and resist crit rate gets further countered by ignore resist crit rate you have critical damage ignore resist critical damage countering resist critical damage same for amp uh, same for additional damage which gets countered by damage reduction and then damage reduction gets countered by ignore damage reduction and ignore damage reduction countered by cancel ignore damage reduction like i said the main difference being um, the cancels will challenge the ignore and the ignore will can will challenge the base value so you always have to go like backwards from the final type of reduction so in the case of damage reduction for instance you have cancel ignore damage reduction which gets uh, to counter ignore damage reduction which counters damage reduction which counters additional damage so you kind of go backwards uh, minimum damage i've not seen any kind of counter to it uh, normal damage is like the yellow damage that you have that gets countered by um, i don't know normal damage <laughs> it's it's simple um these are like flat raw damage values so these will get multiplied with each other like attack gets multiplied by critical damage and amp and so on um, but they don't have any efficiency factor associated to them it's just those numbers in that formula that's it and then on top of this formula you have a second layer of damage influence which comes from um, the effectiveness level so first of all you have raw values which result in a specific amount of damage and then on top of this it's like an additional layer you have the effectiveness of those values because you have let's say 10,000 resulting raw damage but then the 10,000 gets further reduced or it stays at 100% it stays at 10,000 or it gets reduced depending on the effectiveness and effectiveness is uh, penetration versus defense cancel ignore penetration versus ignore penetration ignore penetration versus penetration penetration versus defense if you go backwards so this second layer of uh, calculations i would say um, gets you closer or farther from the 10,000 raw damage which you would normally do decided by attack crit damage amp ignores and all that uh, so first the game comes up with a value and then based on penetration defense and ignores penetration and so on it decides how much of that damage you actually do and then the resulting damage is further multiplied um, by five or six percent or whichever amount of final damage increase you have so let's say uh, the first challenge between resists and ignores and attack and critical damage and so on the flat raw damage would be somewhere along the lines of a um, hundred thousand let's say and then because of your penetration and defense uh, and the enemy defense uh, you somehow end up with 61 percent effectiveness which means you need more penetration but you can't get more so you have a thousand a hundred thousand damage um, hitting at 61 percent efficiency because of penetration results in 61,000 damage 
multiplied by 5% or 0% depending on whether you have a talisman or not um, you then end up with 61,000 damage so technically you have two options at this point you either increase your amp critical damage and attack so that you do 200,000 damage and your effectiveness stays the same 60% and then instead of 60,000 damage you do 120,000 damage but that's because you doubled your raw damage so either you increase your raw damage or you increase your effectiveness which means your raw damage stays the same 100,000 but your penetration increases to the point where your damage is actually 100,000 instead of 60 so now your effectiveness is 100% and you can continue increasing your raw damage so you have two options either you increase attack crit damage amp plus all ignores and so on or you increase your penetration and cancel ignore penetration uh, or you increase your final damage obviously you need all of those but the bottom line is you either work on the value or on the efficiency of that value you either increase the base value and work with less efficiency or you maintain the level of damage and you increase your efficiency of course increasing your penetration like I said only works up to a certain point that's why uh, infinitely increasing your penetration doesn't take you above a hundred percent effectiveness so at some point you'll have enough and then the only way to further increase your damage is to multiply the final or the raw damage final damage also has a limit given by the talisman it's seven percent if i'm not mistaken so at that point you have a hundred percent effectiveness because of penetration thanks to penetration you have seven percent which is the maximum final damage increase that you can get so those two are kept out and so the only way that you can increase your damage further is to increase the raw value through attack through amp through critical damage and so on so that's why you heard me uh, give advice to people on boost your attack boost your attack because at low levels getting penetration is kind of difficult penetration is like attack plus plus it's like um, it does kind of the same thing but it's more expensive so when you just start playing the game you don't have access to uh, extreme level 3 uh, level 4 you don't have access to uh, bikes with extremes in them for penetration you don't have access to mazel rings maybe you don't have access to tempus rings you don't have access to Sienna bracelets with penetration so penetration is out of the question unless you have some penetration in your buff like a force blade or a wizard um, wizards have it as passive it's 50 or 60 let me check uh, passive skill 80 sorry so they buffed it so piercing spell which is the passive for the wizard gives you 80 penetration um, the other classes have 50 penetration like the fire blade of the force blader and so on so you can get some penetration from various items but more often it will be cheaper and faster to just stack a lot of attack so in the beginning you will have way more attack and critical damage and amp than expected and work with less penetration and then um, when it becomes increasingly more expensive to add attack because let's say your weapon reaches plus 20 eventually um, your divine reaches 11 and it becomes more and more expensive to get more attack or um, critical damage or amp because it means increasing your extreme increasing your divine to levels that you can't afford um, then penetration becomes viable because it's not that expensive right so instead of buying uh, a divine 13 in your weapon for six billions or seven billions or eight billions and that gives you 10 penetration uh, 
you might as well get a bracelet because it's 800 millions. So you don't just randomly increase stats at some point. Increasing your attack and critical damage and so on will so increasing your flat raw damage will become more expensive than just getting some penetration. And then as you increase penetration, it becomes more and more expensive and then you go back to increasing raw damage because that's cheaper. Because it's much more difficult to take your penetration in weapon from extreme 4 to extreme 5. Or in a bike from 4 to 5 or from 5 to 6 or whatever. Um, the bottom line being, they all have caps, they all have maximum values given by um, the current patch in Cabal. Your attack is determined by Arcana plus 15, Belt plus 20, um, the Weapons plus 20, Extreme 6, Divine 15. So you have all these max values. So at some point, it's close to impossible, but somebody could achieve maximum attack. Whatever maximum means for us in today's Cabal. And so at that point, the only way you can get more damage is by making sure that you have 100% effectiveness and 7% final damage increase. But at the end of the day, those are kind of impossible to achieve. So you have to work with increase your raw damage until it becomes too expensive, increase penetration, increase raw damage, increase penetration, increase raw damage, increase penetration, whichever one is cheaper. Uh, and of course you have to always look at penetration uh, if you have enough. Because at some point, like I said, you can use a potion and you don't need more penetration in your uh, bike extreme or in your weapon or such, because you get it from the potion. But you can never have enough attack. You can never have enough critical damage. You can never have enough amp. So the raw damage um, arguably is more important. Because at some point, at the very top of the game, you'll have sufficient penetration for most things. Uh, luckily, they keep giving us more and more difficult dungeons. So I don't think that the maximum penetration will forever stay. Like, people won't always have sufficient penetration in future patches. Um, but let's say in a dungeon like Sienna, if you want to be faster, you don't need a thousand more penetration. Because probably five, 400, 500 is enough. At that point, increasing your penetration by a thousand won't change your damage. So if you're doing some shitty ass dungeon that doesn't have... Uh, mobs with high enough defense, you can just power through by using attack critical damage. Not even amp works that well because in the beginning when you don't need a lot of penetration you probably won't have enough uh, attack anyway to amplify. So most likely, that, that's why I keep telling people get attack very high, like close to 4000 um, Crit rate is easy to get 60, it's very easy to get 60, and then you focus on critical damage, and then you focus on amp, and then you constantly look at penetration to see if it's cheaper or more expensive than critical damage and amp. For the most part it's more expensive, so let's say when you start Cabal, you start with attack, around four or 5,000 attack ability you should also have 60% crit rate, you then work on your critical damage and more attack, even more attack, uh, maintaining a lower level of effectiveness but uh, increasing your raw damage because it's cheaper and it will help, it will help you later on. And then when you get close to 10-12 thousand attack ability you start boosting your penetration a bit or even prior to that because like I said certain items like bracelets are super cheap. Um, so you raise both attack critical damage and you also raise penetration by a small amount. Uh, when penetration becomes too expensive you continue with attack and critical damage. Around 14, 13, 14 thousand attack ability you can start getting those triple amp armors because at that point the only way you get more attack is by upgrading your weapons further than 20 which is impossible. Uh, 
uh, further than Arcana plus 15, which is impossible. So attack is pretty much capped unless you're boosting divine or extremes. So that's when you go back to uh, increasing critical damage or amp. But then critical damage means you need a slot extender, which is 15, 16 billions for only 10, 15 critical damage. And that's why you go for triple amps because there are less than 10 billions and they give you like 27, 30 amp instead of eight. So then with those maxed out, your only options are there more attack, extending your weapons, highest tier, or getting penetration. And probably the cheapest out of these will be getting a mazel ring, getting some penetration in the bike. But then you hit the same wall where you have to decide um, do I increase my extreme in the weapon? Do I increase my extreme in the bike? Because I can't get more attack, I can't get more penetration without sacrificing a liver. And so you always have to think of the cheapest way to increase your damage and you work on both uh, raw values as well as effectiveness as well as multipliers. But in a nutshell, this is how they counter each other. So this is what I would actually use to describe the new damage formula. It functions roughly the same as the old one, which um, we know, with certain differences. So today you have attack multiplied by skill amp, player amp and so on, multiplied by critical damage. Um, this ends up with uh, an efficiency factor given by penetration and defense. And then based on that efficiency level, you come up with a certain damage value, which gets uh, lowered by damage reduction, which is the old defense. And then on top of that, you have additional damage from the player. And that's pretty much today's damage. So the only difference from the old formula is the fact that defense is now damage reduction and the whole attack multiplied by amp multiplied by critical damage gets another layer of efficiency added to it and the old defense becomes a new efficiency factor which counters penetration so you take the old formula you make certain changes to it and you more or less come up with today's results the reason why um, nobody other than the developer can tell us this formula is because we don't have the certainty that um, things get increased and decreased in a linear fashion like i described like there are some observations such as uh, penetration doesn't always increase your damage um, damage reduction is like the old defense because people tested it with the uh, ignore damage reduction rune and so on um, we know that we still have a level penalty because if you look at attack ability it constantly increases until you reach level 200 even if you don't change any of your items so obviously the level influences the damage as well um, we know all the things that i've said with penetration and defense and uh, the difference between defense and damage reduction and we now know evasion and how it works and we kind of can tell how ignores function versus the stats that we have but nobody was able to come up with a formula like the one that you see on the left which actually gave us plus minus five damage error margin so back in the day with this formula we could actually calculate the exact damage plus minus five units because uh, mobs spawn with uh, a range of defense a range of attack ability and so on so they don't always have the exact same value so that's why you had a small difference but it was plus minus 
five ten damage or something so in the past we were able to uh, calculate all the damage and you could insert your values in the calculator and then the tool would tell you how much damage you do in game and that would be the exact damage that you dealt there was no it was easy it was a hundred percent accuracy but today there is no such formula even though we know how these values function and what they do we don't have the certainty that um, these are the coefficients these are the formulas these are the exact uh, values so we don't know how much penetration equals how much defense if it's one to one if it's more if it's less um, we don't know many of these things and that's why i personally think it's impossible to come up with the, the new damage formula unless they tell us what the new formula is because we don't have access to there are too many variables we roughly know how they work, like I've described them, um, maybe small differences or future implementations might uh, change these things, but for the most part this is what it works like. This, so you have attack, which is probably the most important value that you have because everything relates to attack. Everything is a percentage of, a, of something and it's a percentage of attack because it has nothing else to multiply. Like when you multiply critical damage and attack, you multiply it based on what? Because the only fixed value is attack. So attack will get multiplied by everything else. It will get multiplied by a fixed amount by critical damage by amp and then efficiency will kick in and penetration will make it um, will make attack feel more efficient or less efficient depending on the amount of defense the enemy has as well so it's just a mixed up formula but we kind of know what to look for you know that at low level you don't need much penetration you need a lot of attack that's a logical conclusion if you have a lot of attack, it's usually better to have high attack and low critical damage. That's why I keep telling people to get Arcridiums and Palladiums instead of Sig Metal when they start playing. Because you'll have low penetration by default and then you'll also have low attack. And if you have low attack, it makes no sense to multiply something that's low. So that's why extended Sig Metal are a bad idea because you have low attack. And later on, when you can increase your critical damage, you'll probably have sufficient resources to do so at the highest tier level. So at that point, you'll probably extend Arcridium or Palladium, or just buy the weapon extended. And then you'll have both critical damage and attack. And you'll have sufficient penetration. And that's when you start ramping up your damage. But for the most part, just knowing these things should make your life easier and it should keep you from making uh, early level mistakes let's say so just keep in mind pump your attack in low levels it will help you more than anything else don't worry about critical damage you can easily reach 200 which is triple damage um, just by having some random low level items and unextended weapons and helm so you don't have to extend your weapons. What's more important is that you take your attack to close to 4000. When you get close to 4000, uh, you can um, start increasing your critical damage by a bit, by getting accessories. You start working on your penetration, mainly bracelets and tempus rings and so on, so something trivial, something cheap. And then with those you'll probably end up having 12,000 attack ability or so at that point um, your only option is to get more critical damage by extending weapons which is impossible or more penetration by upgrading extremes and so on which again is impossible for your level so that's why you start increasing your amp as well 
and then that will push you to 1617 at 1617 you can start farming more things faster easier and that will allow you to extend your weapons or increase your penetration whichever is cheaper probably extremes level three um, and then you go back to extending your weapons because that's like 15 billions and then you go for level four extremes because that's like 30 billions and then um, penetration is usually cheaper than 30 so that will probably be upgraded in time as well and then after you get these you should probably be 50 60 thousand attack ability at that point the only way that you can increase damage is divines which at that point are probably 13 so you start working on divines and then hundreds of billions for extremes and hundreds of billions for bikes and so on and honor medal and everything else but that's part of a of another video that i will make um for now i hope i didn't confuse you more than help you uh, you can always rewatch the video i'm gonna upload it on both twitch and youtube um it's just important to understand the dependency between stats and that's super simple if you look at this so if you don't have time to go through the whole presentation then at least memorize this and remember that attack boosts the nucleus of your damage along with crit rate crit damage amp and so on so the base stats the old stats and then the new stats just work on your effectiveness and then there's another new stat which is a multiplier to your entire damage but primarily primarily focus on attack in early levels and then everything will gradually make sense and that will probably be another video like i said Oof. one hour and a half 90 minutes of pure numbers and notions i hope i didn't confuse you more than i helped um, like i said i will upload the videos as soon as we finish as soon as i finish with this one um if you like what you see please follow the channels you will get notifications when i upload new things and i do plan on making more and more videos um, i don't exactly have i haven't decided yet what's gonna be the third one but this one um will be uploaded soon and i started with the crafting summary summary and then um, these are stats if you have any ideas you can find me on the cabal discord as well and i can probably try to come up with a video for that too otherwise i'm gonna do what i think is important um, for everyone to be able to enjoy the game and make as little or as few mistakes as possible because you can get um, to higher attack ability slowly by making a lot of mistakes which you end up regretting and investing in the wrong things or you can get to higher attack ability faster than the average um, by doing the right things and this is the goal that i have is to teach you within my limits of knowledge is to teach you how to avoid those mistakes because i've made those mistakes as well nobody told me all these things i had to find them um, by myself by making mistakes and so hopefully i can help you avoid those mistakes that i've made so this is from past experience it's not me looking down on people it's me trying to help you avoid the mistakes that i have done and this is what i've learned from them that being said i'm gonna put an end to it it's 90 minutes precisely and i hope you enjoyed it you'll be able to watch it again soon and please follow me on twitch and youtube mostly twitch i don't use youtube anymore i just upload videos
but follow me so that you can see more and more topics and like I said if you have suggestions you know where to find me on the big discord I hope you enjoyed it have an amazing weekend and I'll catch you on the third episode see you